Gaana bang yung paghinga Pagi ka malagi sa utak Tahan, tahan pagkatok Kung walang di ako sa Ako'y tahimik lang sa umpisa Wow, trivia Parang wow mat lang ah Uy, si Laisa. Si Laisa Siguera. Let me give you guys some trivia about limits. Number one, the concept of limits was first introduced by the ancient Greek mathematician Eudaxis around 370 BCE. Number two, the squeeze theorem, also known as the sandwich theorem, is a useful tool for evaluating limits. It states that if two functions sandwich another function and have the same limits as they approach a certain value, then the middle function must have the same limit at that value. Lastly, the number three, Limits can be used to analyze the behavior of function near certain points, such as determining if a function has a vertical asymptote or a removal discontinuity. The limit of the function f of x is the value it approaches as the value of x approaches c certain value. So, as x approaches c, the limit of f of x approaches l. This is written in symbols as follows. Number 1. We have negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, and negative 0 0.001. Next, we should substitute the given x values to the function f of x times g of x. So, first we will substitute negative 0 0.5 to all the x here in 40 over x squared times x plus 1 cubed. Evaluate and it will become 1280. Next is negative 0 0.1 and if we substitute the given x values to the function, we will have 5488.968. Moreover, if we substitute negative 0 0.01 to the function, 40 over x squared times x plus 1 cubed, it will become 412,244.061. Lastly, if we substitute negative 0 0.001 to the function f of x times t of x, which is 40 over x squared times x plus 1 cubed, we will have 40 million. 120,240.401 After that, we should also find the limit of the function f of x times g of x as x approaches to zero from the right side. Unlike from the left side, here in the right side, we must consider positive numbers for the value of our x. So let's have 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. Same process, we just substitute the given x values to the function f of x times g of x. So for 0 0.5, we have 47.40741. For 0 0.1, 0 0.1, we have 3005.1. 25920 for 0 0.01 we have 388236.0592 and last for 0 0.001 we have 39 39,880,239.601 notice that the limit of the function f of x times g of x where x approaches 0 both from the left and right side approaches to positive infinity. Therefore, our final answer will be the limit of the function g, 
f of x times g of x, where x approaches 0, does exist. Here, if we have the function f of x times g of x equal 40 over x squared times x plus 1 cubed, and we will determine the limits of the function if x approaches negative 1. If we substitute negative 1 to all of the x, the function will become like this. 40 over negative 1 squared times negative 1 plus 1 cubed. So just copy the 40. Negative 1 squared is 1 and negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So 1 times 0 cubed is 0. And it will become 40 over 0, which is undefined. Therefore, the limits of the function f of x times g of x, where x approaches negative 1, does not exist. The function of g of x and h of x equals 64 over x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 cubed. And we will determine the limits of the function if x approaches to negative 1. If we substitute negative 1 to all the x, the function will become like this. 64 over minus negative 1 cubed plus 3 times negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 plus 1 cubed. So copy 64 times negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 3 times negative 1. 1 squared is 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 1 cubed. So, negative 1 plus 3 minus 3 plus 1 cubed is equals to 0 cubed. And 0 cubed is 0 0.64 over 0 is undefined. Therefore, the limit of the function g of x and h of x where x approaches to negative 1 does not exist. Number 4. The limit of f of x is equal to 0 as x approaches negative 3. f of x is equal to g of x times h of x. So, 3 over x plus 3 cubed times x squared plus 6x plus 9 squared over 10 squared. And if you factor out x squared plus 6x plus 9 squared, it will be x plus 3 times x plus 3 over 10. Then f of x is equal to 3 over 1 times x plus 3 and 3 over 10 times x plus 3. Since the limit of the function is f of x is equal to 0 as x approaches negative 3, we should substitute negative 3 to the x. So it will be 3 over 10 times negative 3 plus 3 and 3 over 10 times 0 is equals to 0. Hence, it is true that f of x is equals to 0. Number 5. To find the function f of x that satisfies the condition, we need to determine which operation, either addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. To apply to the given function g of x and h of x so that the limit condition will satisfy. If we multiply g of x and h of x, we can get a function that could potentially satisfy the limit condition. Since we're given that the limit of f of x multiplied by g of x should be 0, we can conclude that f of x must be a function that, when multiplied by g of x, gives a limit of 0. Therefore, a suitable function f of x that satisfies the condition is f of x is equals to 0 over x squared plus 6x plus 9 squared. This function, when multiplied by g of x, will result in a limit of 0 as x approaches to negative 3. To get the final answer, we must substitute the 0 in x. So as you can see, we substitute the zero in each x. In that way, we can get the final answer to the question number five, which is the D in E, or does not exist. Remember, finding the limits of something helps us to have deeper understanding, expands our knowledge, and make decisions without crossing those boundaries.